What's going on everybody? Welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to talk about the history of Morocco and specifically the connection to France and why it's relevant. Hope you guys are excited for the World Cup game today. Go Morocco. Hopefully, you know, since they put out Portugal, my country, uh, I'm, I'm rooting for Morocco to go all the way and that would be just an amazing feat to see an African nation hoisting the World Cup and just, you know, being epic in that sense but let's talk about the history of morocco real quick and and why it's relevant to us today so the berber tribes of morocco have been inhabiting this region for the past 10 to twenty thousand years so ever since time has been recorded the berber tribes have been known to roam the area around the atlas mountains which is modern day morocco Many people have conquered parts of North Africa over the years, from the Romans to the Arabs to the French, but the Berber people have been farming and trading in North Africa for thousands of years. For the mountain tribes, isolated amid the high peaks, life is still governed by traditional rhythms, with interactions take, taking place at the village well and at the weekly souks. The reality is, is that these people have lived here throughout all the imperial conquest throughout all of the different peoples coming in and out the berbers have always been in morocco they are the heart of the nation and they are those that have been there and have been doing the most to preserve the history of morocco because it is the history of the berber people and that's why it is relevant to talk about the various conquests that took place up until this time and prior to the 600s, um, when the Muslim caliphates were starting to rise and you had this massive expansion and specifically following the death of Muhammad, as you see in 632, um, you know, they hadn't really gotten out of Saudi Arabia, uh, modern day Saudi Arabia, that is, or the Arabian Peninsula. And uh, it wasn't only it wasn't until after he passed and then the additions of 662 that they fully brought in the Atlas Mountain Ranges, which is modern day Morocco and Spain into the Muslim Empire. So this was a conquest that was able to hold this these regions for almost 700 years, or I should say for over 700 years. So when the Muslims conquered Spain, and they kind of took control of all of northern Africa, a lot of these various tribes, specifically the Berber tribes, they became allies of the Islamic Caliphate. And this would lead to them being known as Moors. So the Moors were a certain group that basically are Berbers, but they are a, they are a, a collection of various Muslims and um, Berber tribe peoples that came together to create this force that was able to conquer all of Spain and hold Spain up until uh, basically the 1400s. And this is relevant because it connects the history of Morocco to Islam, which is the key um, religion in the country today, but it also gives you the history and connection to France because in reality, once they had conquered all of Spain, France was the next target, right? So within these, the mountain ranges in between Spain and France, and these are very, very uh, difficult mountain ranges to get through, you know, it's known as the Basque region. And this is a very, very hard area to conquer because it's just basically extremely mountainous. It's kind of like Morocco in that sense. But one of the big things was that France was very much supporting um, Spanish rebels and Portuguese, anybody that was um, basically kicked out by the by the uh, Muslim advance, they were fighting and eventually would be able to take back um, all of Spain. Uh, at a time, it was known as the Reconquista, so they were reconquering the Spanish Peninsula, and uh, this was done through a combination of Spanish, French, and Portuguese forces. Um, obviously Portugal didn't exist at this time, but what would become Portuguese forces. Um, so this, this is relevant because it was a war at the time specifically between Moors or you could say uh, Berber tribes and France. So this was before the conquest uh, and the imperialism that took place in the 1900s when France 
ended up becoming the imperial power that ruled over Morocco. At this time, it was actually the, the, the Islamic forces and the Moorish forces that controlled all of Spain and parts of southern France. So it's relevant because of the fact that it was the regions that were, were heavily fought over and were connected geographically and historically, connecting both the French and the Muslim peoples. And this talks about at the time, um, so this is much later, once kind of the Islamic forces or the Islamic caliphate started to like break apart and it became regional forces. So these were now regional forces and within North Africa you had the Berber tribes led by these scholars and one in particular was known as Abin el Krim and he was an Amazi. Am Am and a good Arabic scholar who had a knowledge of both the Arabic and Spanish languages and ways of life. He was in prison after World War I for his subversive activities. He later went to Ajir in the Rift Mountains to plan an uprising. In July 1921, Abdin el-Krim destroyed a Spanish force sent against him and subsequently established the Republic of Rif, which was formally constituted as an independent state in 1923. So this was following World War One, and a lot of these regions were not really allied to anybody, but they had a lot of people trying to fight for control of these areas, and obviously the Spanish being one of those peoples. And after the war, it was this move by European colonists that wanted to basically push into Africa and get as much African territory for themselves as they could. This would be known as the Berlin Conference or like at the Berlin Conference they had this um, agreement where Europe would basically like the European nations would split up Africa and they would kind of um, go at their own imperial uh, expeditions within these regions and they wouldn't go to war with each other but they would go to war with the tribes and the peoples that lived in these regions to gain control of them just like here after um, the Republic of Rif was constituted in 1923 by these uh, Arabic scholars um, led by Ebn el Krim, they, the French and Spanish came together and were like, no, we're going to take these people out and we're going to impose our own rule and we're going to split the region up. So this is the same thing that happened in other parts of um, Africa, specifically in like the Congo and, you know, France and England or France and Belgium, they would split up these regions. They would, you know, come into the country, defeat whatever um, army had been there defending the region, and then they would take control and they would put their own people in power. And so it took a combined French and Spanish force numbering more than 250,000 troops to defeat the forces of Ebn al Krim in the Republic of the Rif. In, in May 1926, he surrendered to the French and was exiled. After this, Morocco became a protectorate and an imperial force, or I should say an imperial um, protectorate. So France became the protectorate of Morocco. And the region was kind of split up, so some of the region stayed within Spanish occupation and some of it was given to France but the main region so Casablanca the kind of main um, urban regions that had the main population centers were given to the French so that's why the French have such a history with the people of Morocco because they were the ones that were the imperialist forces that ruled over them between 1920s and all the way up until 1956 Right. So in 1956, the Spanish authorities were taken by surprise when the French decided to grant independence to Morocco. A correspondence agreement with the Spanish was nevertheless reached on April 7th and was marked by a visit of the Sultan to Spain. The Spanish protectorate was thus brought to an end without the troubles that, re that marked the termination of French control. So we talk, they talk about here how there was a large... Um, there was large forces that would rise up and try to force them out, obviously, in all these regions, you know. But one of the main things that happened within Morocco was that they had a very, very powerful um, force, specifically the Berber tribes, these same tribes that were led by Ebn al-Krim. So 
these people were very, very good at hiding in the mountains, just like in Afghanistan, when the United States was trying to defeat the people of Afghanistan, they would hide, they would have these mountain strongholds that were almost impossible to conquer. So you could say the same thing with the assassins back in the day when they had their strongholds within Iran and nobody could get to them because they were such a small force, but they, you know, entire empires couldn't conquer them because they had such a strategic advantage in the place where they were located. So a lot of times it was these mountain kind of retreats or these kind of mountainous regions that enabled them to withstand these greater imperialist forces. And that's what the same thing that allowed Morocco to eventually overthrow the, the French and Spanish forces, right? And this just talks about after that, you know, with the end of the Spanish protectorate and the withdrawal of Spanish high commissioner, the Moroccan Khalifa and other officials from Tetuan, the city again became a quiet provincial capital. The introduction of the Moroccan franc to replace the pesenta as currency, however, caused a great rise in the cost of living in the former Spanish area, along with difficulties brought on by the introduction of French speaking Moroccan officials. In 1958 1959, these changes generated disorders in the Rift region, Tangier too lost much of the superficial brilliance it had developed as a separate zone. As in the former French zone, many European and Jewish inhabitants left. The southern protectorate area of Tar Tarfaya was handed back to Morocco in 1958, while the Spanish unconditionally gave up Ifni in 1970, hoping to gain recognition of their rights to Melina and Quetta. So these are these are places on the Straits of Gibraltar. And this is this is that area um, if you were to see a map, um, there's there's actually an island in between these two, um, and this this little little uh, waterway is known as the Straits of Gibraltar, and it's all that separates Europe from Africa, and it's also all that separates Spain from Morocco. And so, as I was saying, like the the Spanish, they had a lot of the regions that were under fr French control were the urban regions where a lot of the other regions they had split up and had given to Spanish control. And these were the regions that had stayed in Spanish hands longer as the French kind of gave up um, their their imperialist ambitions. It took Spain another almost 20 years to give up those same ambitions. So this is why it's relevant today. This is why France is such a, you know, a hot topic when it comes to the history of Morocco because they are one of the conquerors. They are one of the imperialist forces that ruled over Morocco. And, you know, obviously the Islamic conquest, which was done almost 1500 years ago, that was the conquest that still exists because the Islamic forces that, or I should say the Islamic religion that is now prevalent within Morocco came from an imperialist force at the time, right? So it's just interesting to look at that history and just to know that the history of Morocco um, is a complex one, but it's also one that is relevant when it comes to kind of talking about imperialism and how it affects everybody and in, in, in not only the people in the region and the history, but also, the, as you see in the currency, the kind of um, interactions they have with the world and also the way that they're portrayed throughout the rest of the world. Right. Because Morocco has always kind of had this um, like Casablanca has always had this kind of um, I don't want to say this Western kind of feel because it's been sold to you um, in Hollywood, or like movies and just kind of it has this feel of being a very um, European uh, has a lot of European connections, a lot of European heritage. And, and it's just known as a very um, a very wonderful place. You know, that that has a great history. And so we should be respecting this history, understanding it. And then but also kind of when you comes to things like this, if we can see Morocco defeat France and then win the World Cup, we can see kind of how we're starting to see a resurgence of a lot of these countries that were kind of um, taken advantage of for so long by these kind of very powerful countries or you know uh, religions or empire whatever you want to call it and today they're starting to gain independence and they're starting to show that um, they didn't need any of this and they're able to do it on their own they're able to um, be their own power and and make their own way in the world without any of these imperialist forces and that's all I know about this I don't know too much 
you know, I just wanted to give you guys this quick history so we can talk about how it's relevant to the World Cup and how this kind of France Morocco rivalry has much more to do with history than it does with with soccer. Anyway, thanks for watching, guys. Have a great day.